I'm using the mic because D on the skins. <laughs> You'll see. So this is a week after Katrina for you who survived and for you who did not. It's been called the worst natural disaster our country's ever seen. Which leaves more than a few to wonder what's so natural about neglect, perpetuated disregard for the already dispossessed. I'm saying, did not science long declare a storm of such size inevitable? Were not officials urgently warned local levies wouldn't hold? How then did that cutout per resident reap lie by piping billions otherwise available to his wildly successful? Operation, a liberation, half the globe away. A job you'll recall being told was undertaken to make citizens feel safer. And boy, do we. What with funds for tangible protection, say education, employment, or at the very least evacuation plans that take into account carlessness, cashlessness, consistently catching the chopping block, if even they make it that far. Here we are, offered yet more proof of the foul outcomes empire's priorities breed. As lines some of us had the luxury of deeming long departed, rise up hard as iron, exposing a nation divided. Exploitation, it's very oxygen, an oxymoron we can no more run from. Come now, people, much of this cataclysm Anything but natural, rather a magnification of man-made inequity, well in place already. Call it white supremacy. Everything else sounds offensive, evasive, terribly man-made inequity, in place already. So are you ready to face reactionaries unwilling to believe that, incapable of fathoming lived experience at odds with their own? Water's still neck high, yet you can hear some decry. Foolish bleeding heart complainers, take a moment to consider how much, by and large, things have changed for the better. A tough stance to substantiate, now that New Orleans resembles Atlantis, minus starfish or mermaids, and even notoriously conservative news anchors let their ships loose, lashing out on air at rambling government reps, Guilt-wracked consciences having made them bear witness too. A downtown convention center turned slave pen. A strip of dry highway looking more like Captain's Plank. One major U.S. city left to rot as if a plot had been brewing for ages. And when you find out how fast Halliburton and Bechtel lay claim to reconstruction, shit, you have to be quite gullible not to taste a crooked concoction. Perhaps then, with images of atrocities so sickly resembling what's been labeled archaic, dealt with, moved past, the most aloof among us will be forced to reckon with history, its prevalent presence in our perverted present. At least that's the first hope I've managed to conjure all week, though it's just as quickly dashed by knowing news cameras will soon lose all hints of meaningful focus, their owners no more titillated by evidence of implosion, happy instead to highlight fake progress, like democracy in Afghanistan, or, or Barry Bonds' return to baseball. Sometimes the costs of illusion too abusive, and only outrage will do. Your calls for civility trivialize the obscene, overlook a collective need to eat and vomit disdain when malfeasance of such maliciousness gets lauded as good work under circumstances curse. Fuck that noise. Good works what we would have seen had Beverly Hills been hit. Mm -hmm. A natural disaster? Could only call it that were we long taught to think. Seeing droves of folks dark skinned, helpless, nameless, was in fact natural. Try instead normalized genocide. We wish to deal with reality, yes? That's a term to call paradigm to work from. Cause when Ray Nagin, young black city mayor, noted the feds non-existent 
in response, maybe even flashed on the age of King Louis' conquest, concurrent slaughter of natives, long-term caging of Africans. He urged his constituents to abandon food shelters and walk along the interstate where a handful of buses might soon await. Yet when they arrived, dread stricken, starving at the Gretna city line, behind which writhed a mostly white, mostly suburban neighborhood infamous for attitudes insular, they were met by triggered cops following orders from above, a wall of trained guard dogs barking them back, and all the evidence they needed as to how much things have changed for the better, how much they're worth as humans measures up to the property and indoctrination of Europe's Gulf Coast progeny. Three. Now what about Bush's mom, Barbara? She claimed her victims were underprivileged to begin with. So this set of events was actually working out in all of their best interests. Underprivileged? To begin with? You mean to say nothing existed before millions were kidnapped, then shipped, then sold, then whipped into building an economy you naively come to call free, proclaiming it the product of your own ancestors' toil? Time to wake from that, Reverend Babs. You tiny minorities responsible for denying the masses access, whether grocery stores or doctor's doors, be it bank loans or well-built homes. This underprivileging is not some natural thing. And what about overprivileged? Could we begin using that term to reference those so insulated by a worldview rooted in domination it remains unseen? Like pollution on the wind, disease spreading from within. Could we denaturalize your ignorance, Barbara Bush, by making you and those of your clan sound as deficient, strange, empty, or wrong as this term underprivileged evokes? Because language is never neutral, right? And this dynasty's pipped it sufficiently to make vigilance and vibrant resistance an absolute necessity. So let us stop blaming nature for the sun's blameworthy nature. Let us stop treating as ordinary systems of oppression when they're actually inventions asking to be ended. A national emergency? Then let's emerge and see how they spin a hurricane so that structural injustice remains, making a fight for truth, the dismantling of delusion, yours and mine to claim. Emerge and see, emerge and be that voice for change.